let's turn to Jason. Um, there's been a lot of attention given to neoadjuvant approaches with immunotherapy, not just in melanoma, but other cancers. So uh, who do you consider for neoadjuvant immunotherapy? Uh, and how often do you see these patients? Yeah, so it's a good question and appreciating everything that everybody else has mentioned so far. I think there's neoadjuvant and there's neoadjuvant. And what I mean by that is uh, in the old days, we had patients who had disease that was probably not really resectable. And we had a hope that by giving some intervention initially, we could shrink it enough, we could do surgery. And so those patients are not that common, but they do happen and all of us have seen them in clinical practice. That's somewhat actually in contrast with the whole concept of neoadjuvant as we've been discussing in the field of the last couple of years, which is trying to identify patients who actually are resectable, but where we could intervene in a therapeutic approach, either for a research consideration or you know, potential therapeutic implications prior to the surgery. And so those are kind of two different things. Uh, the extent to which these are common patients, I would say, is suspects. Uh, at our center, because we have had an interest in this for quite an extended period of time, we actually see a fair number of these. We have had institutional investigator-initiated trials where we've put on 20 to 30 patients per year. But again, recognize that there's a long-standing practice of all patients with cutaneous malignancies being referred to UPMC Hillman as the central hub in Western Pennsylvania, you know, owing to the work of John Kirkwood for, for decades now. So in clinical practice in general, this isn't a particularly common presentation. I will note, however, that the results initially, and others are going to speak to them, are, are quite impressive for intervening. That being said, it's still a research question, and we really guide all the patients towards research protocols. We wouldn't necessarily take a patient through neoadjuvant therapy if they were resectable, if they weren't going to go on a protocol. And I think that's an important differentiator. And for community uh, practitioners, they should be cognizant. There actually is a cooperative group trial now. It's a SWOG clinical trial trying to look at the impact of, ad, of neoadjuvant therapy relative to adjuvant. And I'd strongly recommend people consider that if they actually do see some of these patients. Yeah. And when you see these folks, do you test them for BRAF or PDL1? Does it matter to you? We tend to test them for BRAF, uh, not really for PDL1, but for BRAF, because um, in, in the setting where they have palpable disease, then our expectation is that our risk is going to be quite high for recurrence, and it seems very reasonable to get that data up front. That data doesn't always inform what we would do. Most of the immunotherapy trials, uh, that were, most of the trials we've been pursuing in the neoadjuvant space are immunotherapy trials, so we sometimes get the PDL1, but again, that's more in the context of research, not so much to guide standard practice.